In this video we are going to study a very instructive game in which we will see how White very easily refutes the Stafford Gambit. The game began with the moves e4. e5. Now, White played knight f3, developing the king's knight and attacking against the e5 pawn. Black responded with knight f6, entering the Petrov defense. White played knight takes e5. And now black played knight c6, entering the Stafford gambit. Black sacrifices a pawn in order to accelerate the development of their pieces. White captured the enemy knight. After d takes c6, white played d3, to defend the e4 pawn and allow the development of the queen's bishop. Black played bishop c5, developing the bishop towards a good diagonal with the idea of continuing with knight g4 and pressing against the f2 pawn. White responded with bishop e2, developing the king's bishop and taking control of the g4 square. If black now plays queen d4, threatening mate on f2. White simply castles and can then play c3 and d4 to force the enemy pieces to retreat. And if black plays knight g4, attacking against the f2 pawn. White can capture the knight. Black can play queen h4, threatening mate on f2. But white plays queen f3, avoiding mate. After bishop takes g4, white plays queen g3, rejects the attack and is left with an advantage as we saw in the previous video. In the game, black played bishop e6, completing the development of his minor pieces and avoiding direct confrontation to keep the maximum number of pieces on the board. White castled. Black played queen d7, mobilizing the queen and preparing to castle on the long side. White played c3, with the idea of continuing with d4 and blocking the action to the enemy bishop. Black castled on the king side. It was better to castle on the long side, but white would still have the advantage in any case. Now, white played bishop g5, with the idea of capturing on f6, to weaken the opponent's castling. Black played knight g4. White responded d4, occupying the center with his pawns and attacking the bishop on c5. Black answered bishop b6. White played h3, attacking the opponent's knight to force it to retreat. Black withdrew his knight to the f6 square. But white played bishop takes f6, with the idea of weakening the enemy castling. After g takes f6, white played f4, threatening to advance with f5, which would win the bishop. Black played f5, to stop the advance of the white pawn and avoid the opponent's threat. White played knight d2, completing the development of his minor pieces and defending the e4 pawn, which was attacked. Black captured the e4 pawn, with the idea of opening the game and trying to activate his bishops. The game continued knight takes e4. Black played king h8, freeing the g8 square for the rook, with the idea of trying to attack the white king. White played king h2, placing his king on a better square to anticipate a possible attack by the opponent. Black played rook g8, placing the rook on the g-file, to press along this file. But white played knight f6 creating a double threat on the queen and the rook. White is going to gain more material. Black played queen e7. After knight takes g8, rook takes g8. White played queen e1, occupying the e-file, which is an open file, and taking control over the h4 square, to prevent the black queen from invading that square. Black played f5, freeing up the 7th rank, to be able to move the queen to the kingside attack. But white played bishop d3, threatening to capture the f5, pawn, taking advantage of the pin along the e-file. Black played queen f7, to get out of the pin. White played queen e5 check. Black played rook g7 to defend against the check. White played rook f to e1 threatening to capture the bishop on e6. The bishop on b6 is completely out of play and white has a clear advantage. Now, black played queen g6 threatening to checkmate on g2. 
White played g4, to avoid mate and at the same time attack the f5 pawn, taking advantage of the pin along this diagonal. Black is completely defenseless. The game continued queen f7. Queen takes e6. Queen takes e6. Rook takes e6. h6. Rook takes h6 check. King g8. Rook e1, putting the queen rook into play, which was the last piece left to enter the combat. Black played king f8. But white played bishop c4. After rook e7, to oppose the action of the enemy rook. White played rook h8 check. And after king g7. White played rook g8 check. Black played king f6 to defend his rook. But white responded g5 checkmate. A very instructive game in which we have seen how white refuted the Stafford gambit very easily.